Welcome to Education Update. I'm Rafael P. Roman. High school is the final chapter in our children's education before they enter college or the workforce. But experts say many students are graduating unprepared and that inadequate learning standards have played a role. To tackle this problem, more than 40 states have now adopted the new Common Core state standards, which will go into effect in just a few years. In this episode, we'll take a look at what can be learned from teachers at two high schools in New York City who have already started working with the Common Core as part of a pilot program here. Hillcrest High School in Queens, New York, a diverse community of about 3,300 students. Preparing kids for life after high school is a top priority here. Students are grouped into small learning communities that connect to career tracks like pre-med, business technology, and public service and law. Both English and math teachers here have started to use the new Common Core state standards in their classrooms. Today, in 10th grade geometry, Dale Cohn and Kate McGrain are talking about triangles, and they're starting with a vocabulary lesson. Bisector. This one's an easy prefix. What's the prefix you say? Bi. Bi. And the root? Set. Bi means? Two. Two. Set. Does anybody know what that means? The cut, exactly. We decided to structure it in a way that, um, as far as the, as the Common Core standards were concerned, to address precision. We were looking for how we can be exact in, in defining what structures are in place inside a triangle. Attend to precision. It's one of the eight standards for mathematical practice that appear at the beginning of the Common Core State Standards for Mathematics. They outline the broad math skills that all kids should develop, and they appear at the top of every chapter. The high school chapters are organized by concept rather than grade, so states and schools can decide how to shape instruction. These concepts include number and quantity, algebra, functions, geometry, statistics and probability, and modeling, a concept meant to be incorporated across all high school math classes. It's important for kids to be able to apply math to problems that are not given as a math problem. In the standards, this is called modeling. I want you to use this logic to solve this problem using locks. Modeling is an important part of instruction in Jose Rios' algebra and trigonometry class. Today, his students are using logarithms to figure out how long it will take an $8 allowance to grow into 20. I'm trying to take things about allowance, money, things that they like, things that they may know about, things they may be curious about. And the core is informing my decision to do it that way. The point is to make it a deeper experience for a student, uh, not just formulas, something that they can take with them, that they will hold on to, that they can see how math is used in a daily way. 20, we're looking for 20 bucks. So how many years? The 20 is between five and six years. Between yeah. five and six years. Yeah. That's how long it's gonna take from $8 in your allowance to become 20. $20. Thank you so much, James. Look, everybody, we took this tough problem and we made it into an algebraic problem. I think students are seeing that uh, is uh, willing to go that extra step to have them really apply something that we've learned to have something in the real world, something that maybe they've never seen before, something that's richer, something that's a little more profound. We had a very similar experience in our classroom. You know, it's, we saw them taking part. We saw them doing, get, getting pretty deep into what we were looking for. Because they were working so hard on it, it actually took us longer than we wanted to take, but that was good learning, and that's what we really wanted to achieve. The standards writers say this is key. Too often they say math standards actually incorporate too much material, which teachers and students end up racing through. The Common Core standards are designed to be fewer and clearer so teachers can slow down and ensure students gain a deeper understanding. This is a little different. It's taking a little bit longer because what they're finding in problem solving is that there are many ways to do problems. It is no one way. I, I think what I see that's different for students is, and teachers' expectations of students is, students have moved from being the receptors of information to being the processors of the information that they receive. Hillcrest's principles like the new Common Core standards, but they do have some concerns about how they will be implemented before new state exams arrive in 2014. These are K to 12 standards, and as we implement them, obviously there'll be a be a gap. So as students come into high school not having experienced the standards since, since kindergarten, there'll, there'll be an implementation gap. I think our biggest concern regarding the implementation 
is waiting to see what the state assessments are going to look like in relationship to the new Common Core standards. The sooner we know what the assessments are going to look like, I believe the quicker we can move on the implementation of the standards within our school. Hillcrest teachers are providing feedback on the new assessments which New York State is helping design. Experts say the new test will look a lot different. They will be given throughout the year, the math test will involve more modeling, and the English tests a lot more writing. The new Common Core Standards for English Language Arts and Literacy contain four main strands across all grade levels, reading, writing, speaking and listening, and language. Each strand begins with college and career readiness anchor standards, which correspond with the content standards one-to-one. -one. And like the math standards, the writers say the English standards are clearer, more focused, and more rigorous. The standards aim to achieve far greater depth of mastery. So what you're choosing is fewer things that must be done extremely well. In the case of the standards, I would summarize that as to read like a detective and write like an investigative reporter. That is, the standards reward students who continually hone their craft in reading and gathering evidence from what they're reading, and then their ability to present that information clearly and that evidence clearly in conversation as well as in writing. Was there a clear topic sentence in the introduction? Who says yes? Today, students in Danielle Ruggiero's ninth grade English class are working on the fourth draft of articles about recent events and issues at Hillcrest High School. As you can see, bringing phones to school is a bad thing. It can distract kids from learning. Traditionally, the standards writers say too much emphasis has been placed on writing personal narratives, a skill rarely used in college or on the job. The Common Core standards expect 80% of writing in high school to be expository and persuasive. Just before even, uh, it was really hard for them to understand how to articulate their reasons for why they believe what they believe and to have evidence to support that. With the Common Core and breaking it down really specifically, it gets more out of them because it's a lot more focused and it's a lot more clear. So it's nice to see that improvement. It takes a while to get there, but... <laughs> Upstairs, English teacher Jill Lee's students are also working on a writing assignment, an argumentative essay. They're reading news articles and reports to find solid sources. Hispanic and black youth average about 13 hours of media exposure daily. One of the things that we noticed about our high school kids is that we're not preparing them for college. They need to know how to read sources. They need to know how to independently research papers, and they need to know how to write a proper paper. It is really important for them to know, number one, that there are various sources, some are reliable and some are not, and they need to independently be able to determine that. Reading more complex informational text is another big shift in the Common Core standards. In high school, the standards say 70% of reading should be literary nonfiction and include standards not just for reading literature, but also for reading informational text. But it's not expected that all this will only be done in English class. The standards also include a section called Literacy and History and Social Studies, Science, and Technical Subjects. Everyone in the school has to start thinking about literacy. Shale Polakosaransky is the second in command of the New York City Department of Education. He's a proponent of the Common Core Standards and is leading the pilot program here. It's not good enough for it just to be the English teacher. So social studies teachers have to start thinking about can the kids access these texts. What impact did clashing values have on European imperialism in Africa? David Riesenfeld is one of those social studies teachers. He's leading the Common Core pilot here at Robert Wagner, a secondary school of about 550 students, also in Queens, New York. Riesenfeld is focusing on the standard sections that require identifying points of view and citing textual evidence. Oh, well, what do we have to do to debate it? What kinds of things must we uh, have? We need facts. Okay, good. So we need, and what do we use for facts? What's that word that we tend to talk about? Evidence. Good. So we're talking about we have to use evidence. And it's important, guys, because this does hit on one of the standards that we're focusing on, which is citing evidence from the things that we get our information from. So the nice thing about this is that there's a heavy component in these standards that try to address the things that kids are going to need to know as they walk into any aspect of life. So whether you're doing a career track or a college track, you're going to have to know how to communicate certain things in certain ways. I mean, anywhere from the auto mechanic to the university professor, we're going to have to look at how kids can take information that they're presented with, whether it's a manual or an academic text, and, and understand how, what to do with it. To prepare for today's history class on European imperialism in Africa, Riesenfeld's 10th graders studied photos and illustrations from an eyewitness book on Africa, 
read an essay by 16th century social reformer Bartolome de las Casas, and read excerpts from the novel Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe, a complex text recommended in the standards appendix. They must now use what they've read in a class debate. On one side, the European imperialists. On the other, the indigenous Africans. The way they went about things in like, you know, like torturous ways and cruel ways, that's not the way you do things. Our culture has been uh, working the way it has been for hundreds of years and we're not struggling. So let's say you, you, your crops get infected with some disease, how are you going to eat? Then that's when There'll we be a famine. help. But then the way you do it, you just come in and kill everybody and take the land for your benefit, not to help us. Jennifer Apodaca is a consultant who's working with teachers at Robert Wagner on the literacy pilot program. I thought the questions that you prepared were extremely focused. I felt that every kid was able to articulate something very different and distinct, which is what we've been wanting them to do, is to engage in, in that material. I think the facts were there, but I think it could have been much more specific. I absolutely agree. I think that there wasn't as much they didn't go back to the facts that they have. Maybe you want to say, use these sources. So maybe you have to specify, like, you must use information from the following documents. No matter where you go, guys, this stuff is going to be extremely important. To Riesenfeld is a fan of the new standards, which have pushed him to try new things in the classroom, like asking different types of questions, stepping back as the facilitator, and getting the kids to come up with the information rather than handing it to them. But changing the way he teaches has not been easy. I think it's been kind of a roller coaster a little bit. You know, when it first started out, I was a little uncomfortable with it. I kind of held on to some of my old ideas about things. It's like I remember our first conversations at the beginning of the year, and <laughs> they weren't the happiest conversations. You're much happier now, <laughs> right. I have to say. <laughs> I mean, it you wasn't. Really are. I, I had the resistance, you know. I, I, yeah. I, I didn't let. I didn't really let my guard down. But the evidence that we're seeing in terms of the improvement in writing, improvement in communication, I see that the kids are starting to rise to some of the objectives that we're setting for them. Robert Wagner is a relatively small community with a dedicated staff. But like many urban schools in America, it faces challenges. According to Bruce Noble, principal during the 2010-2011 school year, the dropout rate here hovers around 30 percent. And he wonders how schools like his will be held accountable given their challenges and all the other demands on his staff. I'm hopeful in the sense that it's a national uh, reform and it has a tremendous amount of uh, political support behind it. I'm also a little leery of everything else that's coming at us. It's hard to see how we can add this to our plates. Paula Kosaransky acknowledges it's a tough time to introduce new reforms, but he believes teachers will find the new standards to be a positive shift. What's unique about this is it's the first time you see federal, state, and districts working closely together. Usually one is going in one direction, the other is going in the other direction, and it's actually very confusing for people in schools. And by saying, here's what we all agree kids need to know and be able to do, and we're going to just focus really well on this, and we're going to stop doing some of the stuff we've been doing that's actually a distraction, we're going to take some work off of your plate. I think it actually changes from being a new burden to actually being, wow, this could actually make sense. Standardizing things is a tough thing because kids aren't standard. Like you can't look at a group of kids and say, oh, you're a standard group of people. You're all the same. You're, they're not drones. They're not clones. You can't figure out how to make something that's going to blanket everything and fix all the problems that they have. But I think this is a step towards that. And I think it's a step towards creating something that will increase the level and increase the rigor of everything that's done in public schools, as long as we can create a framework for it to happen in a reasonable way.